first. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, as Andrea mentioned, I have had Parkinson's for 11 years. And I think everybody has kind of a unique diagnosis story, but I have one too, and I want to share it with you. Um, I was diagnosed 11 years ago, but I think for about a year or two before that, I knew something was wrong. And I had been to three neurologists trying to help me figure out what was going on, and nobody had diagnosed me properly. But then in that journey, I had of trying to figure out what was wrong with me, I found out I had prostate cancer. So I took a, took a leave from trying to figure out what was wrong with my neurological system and I focused on my prostate situation. I hired a good urologist and uh, uh, I went through the treatment program and you know, six months later I was in, my, in the office with him and he said, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that you are cured of prostate cancer, you don't have any left, you have a zero PSA and I think it will probably not come back again, no guarantees, but I think you're probably in good shape. The bad news is I think you have Parkinson's. And I said, how do you know that? You're a urologist. And he said, well, your, your symptoms are unique because you don't have a tremor. And believe it or not, my father had PD and he didn't have a tremor. So when I saw your bradykinesia and your, your rigidity, I knew you had Parkinson's just like my father did. And so I quickly went and found a good, uh, neurologist that specialized in, in Parkinson's, uh, emotion, uh, MDS, and uh, uh, was con the diagnosis was confirmed, and I have been uh, uh, now a proud member of the Parkinson's community for 11 years. Um, so I spent the first, you know, year and a half being a little bit uh, disappointed and a little bit angry and uh, a little bit uh, did some grieving. And I was with a buddy of mine uh, <clears throat> lamenting a little bit about my future. I was only 47 at the time, 48 probably. We are on the golf course and he said to me, I was lamenting to him about how, how am I gonna put my kids through college? How am I going to take care of my wife in retirement? And um, uh, he looked at me with a twinkle in his eye and he said, uh, uh, Brian, you're gonna, be, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be a millionaire. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, well, you're gonna, you're gonna be Home Depot's best paint shaker ever. <laughs> and, and, and I kind of had an epiphany and I thought to myself, you know, um, that's the kind of attitude I wanna take uh, about, about this, this, this impact in my life. And I wanna use that kind of an attitude as opposed to a negative attitude. And so I tried to turn things around and, and, and try to make uh, lemonade out of lemons and uh, uh, go forward from there. My son, who was an ASU student at the time, was studying kinesiology, and he said, Dad, there's a bunch of chatter on the internet about how, and this was about 10 years ago, mind you, this is kind of before this became really a, a, a current hot topic, but he said there's a lot of chatter on the internet about how exercise is good for people with Parkinson's. And coming from an athletic family, we were, I, I had three boys, and we all, we all, they all played sports, and I was very athletic and involved in many sports, and uh, he said, let's, let's, let's do a, a fundraiser and create awareness about exercise. And so we did, and in our first event, we had, we had maybe 25 kids show up and mainly his customers. And, and we had a couple of our boot camp and he raised $365 and he was, he was very proud of himself. And uh, so from there we went on, we, we created the Bear Challenge and uh, uh, we've been doing that now for 10 years. This, this will be our 10th year. We've raised over $150,000 and we've had, for, you know, for the Michael J. Fox Foundation, we've had uh, probably a couple hundred people with Parkinson's disease com com complete the Bear Challenge. And uh, so that's what I've been up to for the last couple of years. And um, uh, then about two years ago, just about two years ago, exactly this month, um, my doctor, I had been on carbidopalilidopa for about six or seven years. And the dyskinesia was starting to get, get to me a little bit. My dyskinesia was, was increasing. And so I, uh, my doctor said to me, he said, you should start, th you should start thinking about DBS. And uh, so I did some investigation. I met, I, in my case, I wanted to meet some younger people in, the, in their 40s that were athletic to see if it was, you know, if it was, it was a good thing for a young athletic person to experience, you know, where the results good and uh so i interviewed about two or three people that were that fit that that fit that profile that i thought i was in 
and um, uh, they had, they it became very apparent to me that it was going to be a good thing for me, and and so I said, all right, let's go, and I went through the process of being qualified, and I had my surgery, and it has changed my life, and I'm very bullish, and uh, so I'm I'm happy to be here today. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for wanting to learn about the D DBS surgery. And anytime you come, if you come, if you don't live in Arizona, you want to come to Arizona and, and participate. Or we have got a lot of cool things going on here in Arizona. So um, once again, thanks for joining us today. And, and Patty, it's, I'm ready to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks so much. Well, um, I'm so glad we're here today, and uh, I appreciate all of you out there today. Hope you learned something that will help you make that decision one way or the other. But my journey started with some pain in my leg and some shaking, but I wrote that off to um, hiking. The, I wrote it off to age related because I just hiked the Grand Canyon. So I thought that some aches and pains were easy to write off. <laughs> Excuse me, but when my tremors worsened, I was misdiagnosed with uh, essential tremors and then sent to a, a movement disorder specialist. Now, because I was single and um, I lived by myself, I didn't uh, expect such a horrible diagnosis either when I went to the uh, doctor. And that was uh, over 10 years ago now. But the movement disorder specialist diagnosed me and I was devastated. I didn't know anything about Parkinson's except Michael J. Fox had it. And uh, I was devastated. So I went into a horrible depression and soon my, my tumors worsened, but everything else got worsened because I did something that no Parkinson's person, person should do. I isolated myself and that's a horrible thing to do. So my tremors worsened, but I also found myself in a very short amount of time, uh, stooped over. I was shuffling. I was walking with a cane for balance. I'd lost my voice and uh, I was, um, my left leg was dragging. So I was a mess, but Dr. Mahant, my doctor at the time, decided that I should take the big program. I did that. And I believe it saved me from a wheelchair. It was so amazing. I had such great results. But I also added uh, water aerobics and uh, stationary cycling at the time. So I felt so good about my results that I wanted to give back. So I decided to ride my bike in six inch heels um, to raise funds and to also raise awareness for Parkinson's. Uh, I found the Tremble Class, which is a wonderful singing group for in the meantime very therapeutic for people with Parkinson's. The director's amazing. And we learn to um, enunciate better. We learn to project. It strengthens our voices and just a great group. Um, it's like a little family we have together. So soon I found myself in a pageant because somebody uh, heard me sing at one of the uh, events and uh, heard they, uh, suggested I be in a pageant. I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm not pageant material. This is not who I am. But they said it's what you bring to the community. So I suddenly found myself in a pageant uh, with women over 60. And although I didn't win the crown that evening, I did, um, I was named first runner up. But more importantly, I won the talent portion of the contest seeing Gloria Stefan's Get On Your Feet. So that was all great. But my tumors are worsening and it was, I was finding it harder and harder to just stand up properly. So my travels and all my uh, speaking engagements were difficult for me. And uh, even though Dr. Mahant had suggested DBS to me, I was too afraid. So my quality of life was suffering and um, my then now my spouse, I was not, I was not helping him because I wasn't being fair to him by being so afraid to do something like DBS. So, I mean, I couldn't stand to hug people at the holidays because uh, my tumors were so bad. I could hardly stand the shower. Um, I couldn't be on our boat. Lee and I had this great boat. Um, you know, I couldn't hold my phone, so I was a mess. So finally I decided that to say yes to DBS and it really has been a life changer for me. It was, it's really been one of the best things I've ever done. I just wish I'd done it sooner. But um, it turned out to be a wonderful thing for me. Great, thank you. And it's interesting, not to over oversimplify your journeys, but it strikes me the similarities between those two stories. First of all, thank you for 
opening up and being vulnerable about the fact that immediately after diagnosis, there was a grieving period, there was denial, isolation. Um, that's, I, there, we hear that a lot in, you know, the, the programs that we do and being honest about that is, is really hard sometimes, but I'm so glad that both of you came out on the other side and it sounds like you found activities, you know, Patty's riding bikes in six inch heels <laughs> and Brian, yeah, I didn't, I, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> I want to take a few still, but it worked out to be for the best. So. And then Brian immersed himself more in athletics and baseball and had the fundraising, um, you know, with your son. So it sounds like, you know, your arcs are similar. And then it got to the point where those those activities that you had had found, um, you know, the advocacy, the singing, um, you know, the athletics, the speaking engagements when those started to be affected by your symptoms, that's what triggered you to go to your doctors or, you know, and, and find out what the next step is. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And when you went to your doctors, you know, um, what did you, what did you tell them? You know, was it as simple as, I'm ready to hear more about DBS or the symptoms are getting so bad. I mean, did you first go the route of more medication? Can you tell me about what that period of your lives were like? Well, for me, I continued to just take more carbidopa. dopa. I tried the patch, I tried extended release, I tried all kinds of things. And finally, I was taking one or one and a half uh, pills uh, every hour or hour and a half. So it was just, you know, it was past time for me to do something else. You had almost maxed out and, you know, that, that's a lot of pills every hour. Yeah, it is. So what about you, Brian? Um, uh, you know, I had a pretty typical journey. I had uh, great results from taking the carbidopa levodopa for six or seven years. Uh, it really helped me uh, with my motor skills, and um, um, I just got to that spot where a lot of a lot of people get to is that I, the more I took, the more dyskinesia I got. So it was bouncing around between being too dyskinetic. With if I didn't have any carb, if I didn't have any levodopa in my system, I was I was I was slow and rigid, and then I'd have an hour felt good, and then I'd have an hour where I was dyskinetic. So it was just. Ba bouncing back and forth between three or four different conditions all the time. And I just kept experimenting with different exercises and different uh, amounts of medication. And finally, my MDS, my, my neurologist said, hey, you should think about DBS. And so I did my, and usually when he gets serious about something like that, when he, when he says I should think about it, it means he thinks that I'm ready. So I uh, did my research, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like both of you, you were working hand in hand with your movement disorder neurologist and Absolutely. had a great relationship with, with both of them, which also is not everyone's experience. So I'm so glad that both of you found neurologists that you could really connect with. And it sounds like you have a, a relationship with them. Definitely. I've been with uh, Pamela Mahant over, well, about 10 years. And I know you've been with- I've been with Johan Samantha for about, for about 11 years, yeah. Okay, great. And he's, he's more, he's as much of a buddy as he is a, yeah. my doctor at this point. And so once, you know, the idea of DBS, you know, when it started to gain traction as, you know, the alternative, how did you research the procedure? Well, I, I went online, but I also go to a lot of conferences. I, go, I listen to a lot of webinars and, um, my fiance at that time, he's in the hearing section of the uh, medical field. So he was very interested. He wanted to see all the videos and all of that. So he researched a lot too. But one of the things that I did that I found interesting for me was I would always talk to somebody either online or in person and say, would you do it again? Because I thought that was important to find out. And then I would ask them why or why not. So that was very helpful to me. Uh, I, it's interesting. I asked the same question. Uh, uh, I did some research on the internet and I did, but, but mainly, as I mentioned earlier, I 
went out and I sought out younger athletic folks that uh, had been through the DBS. I wanted to make sure the, the positives I, I had outweigh the negatives, if there were any. And um, that was one of the questions I always asked was, would you do it again? Mm -hmm. And I got so many clear yeses that, that, that it became apparent that, that I was going to be happy if I was fortunate enough to be, to be qualified. Definitely. And then Brian had it done before I did. So he went through it and told me all his uh, experiences. So mm -hmm. that's when I was like, oh, I have to do it now. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And that's part of why we're doing this. I mean, not everyone, you know, knows as many people as the two of you. And some people live in parts of the country where, you know, it, it's harder to get connected to conferences. So thank you again mm -hmm. for doing this. Um, and Patty, you mentioned, you know, your husband was in a medical field, so you were able to, you know, use him as a resource. And um, both of you have children, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes did you one talk, okay, did you talk as a family? I mean, was the family involved? Um, you know, because brain surgery, it sounds scary. Was it a personal decision or was it a family decision? Well, I don't, my family is uh, so supportive. I know Brian's is too, but they've always been there for me no matter what I was doing. And they knew I'd been discussing DBS for a while. So we were joking around a lot, a lot about it, but they knew I was um, thinking about it. And so they supported me in every way. Great. Same with you, Brian. Um, I had a similar experience. I had, I had three boys, three adult boys. and. Uh, and, and uh, they, they were gung-ho. I think they make their decisions based on my attitude. Mm -hmm. And when I got positive about it, they were gung-ho. Most importantly, I wanted my wife, Kay, to, to buy in and, 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 and be, a, be a proponent of the decision. And so she did her own research and she did uh, agree with me that it was the right thing for me to do. And we made the decision together and uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, pursued the, the whole journey together. Yeah. Okay, very good. And I think a lot of people that I talk to, um, you know, there's just at, at face value, there's a fear associated with, you know, your brain being operated on. How mm -hmm. did the two of you overcome that fear? Well, for me, it was, it was either that or the, the, horrible quality of life I had at that moment, but, or at that time. But I was very fearful. But after I talked to so many people, I, I just realized that this was the thing I had to do, you know, to get, to have a quality of life again. So that's why I decided to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, um, for some reason, I wasn't too concerned about it. I, uh, I, well, I know one of the reasons my, my surgeon, Dr. Francisco Ponce, looked at me in the eye and said, this is right for you. And, I, and, I, and he had done <clears throat> a lot of surgeries, and I think he's done more than anybody in the country. And he had a lot of confidence, and that rubbed off on, rubbed off on me very, 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 very well. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's do it. That was huge for me that he had done so many, so many of them. He'd done over 650 when I made my decision. And I, I knew that that was just the right thing for me to do because he, he was so successful. All the Medtronics people were so supportive. And then I love that here in Phoenix, they do a whole team of people. And then you take an educational course as well. So I had two sisters and Lee come with me. So that was, that was a big portion of it, too, that we had such a great care team mm -hmm. to help us through all that. Any questions we had, any concerns. So that really calmed a lot of my fears as well. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, so once you, and that gets into my next question. So once you decided, okay, let's do this, let's do DBS, there's other decisions that you have to make, right? So for yeah. example, you know, which surgeon? So how did you choose your surgeon to start with? Well, that was pretty easy for us because he's such a big leader in the, in the industry, nationwide, worldwide. Um, I think he's done more than anybody else. And, um, uh, and uh, he's just such a 
had such a great reputation that it was easy for us to make that decision. Okay, Absolutely. and you got that, those stats from your neurologist or from your own research? A little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, got it. And okay, so you know which surgeon, and he only operates at one hospital, so you know which hospital. Um, what about, so next you mentioned Medtronic, so how did you decide, because they're, right now there's uh, three different device companies that are approved um, to treat DBS with their devices. Was it up to you to decide or was it your doctor? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, at the time, the other two had just kind of inter been introduced in the marketplace and uh, it was a pretty easy decision for me. I was just, I was, I was convinced the right thing to do is, is uh, go with the, the, the tried and true product at the time. And um, plus I just, I knew some folks from Medtronic and they, I was convinced that they had worked for a good company and they care a lot about their products. And so I just, that was, an easy, that was also an easy decision at the time. For me too, um, even though I had a, a little bit more uh, decision or choices, I decided to go with this Medtronic's uh, device because of its, um, as you said, it's, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a blank moment, because of its positive uh, results, all, yeah. the, all the great numbers of times they'd done it. And so that's why I, that was a big, or an easy decision. Trying to, trying to, yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. So now we know we're gonna do it. We have our doctor, our hospital, you know, which specific device. Um, did you have to make the decision on the rechargeable versus non-rechargeable battery? And how did you do that? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that was also a pretty simple decision. I was, I was, uh, I didn't want to have to bother with the rechargeable. The fact that the the, the non-rechargeable wouldn't last as long didn't bother me because I thought if it if I could get it to last four or five years, which which my doctor thought was 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 achievable, then by that time there'd be a, a technology change. I'd probably want the new equipment anyway, even though it would require a new surgery. But I didn't really care about that, so so I decided to go with the with the with the non-rechargeable, so I didn't have to worry about recharging it. I was the same way. I didn't want to have to mess with that. You know, we have so many other things to charge every day. I didn't want another thing to have to think about. Plus the fact that the um, Medtronic's device was so, um, had been so successful. And now I forgot what else I was going to say. So we can go on to the next question. <laughs> have a moment. Very good. And I don't know if you can, if everyone can see, but there is a Medtronic sign behind you. And um, so they, so Brian and Patty, we are in the Medtronic office broadcasting this. So thank you to Medtronic for offering your office space. Mm -hmm. However, the two of you, you know, I, I don't know if I even need to say this, but two of you are not being paid for this. And these are purely their opinions. And right. thank Absolutely. you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I just noticed um, Medtronic there above your shoulder. And just so you know, there's not, you know, mm -hmm. like a, electric shock going in every time you, you know, don't talk about Medtronic. <laughs> night. No, nothing like that. No, 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 no. Yes. And we can tell from your, you know, from your openness and demeanor. Um, I, I may say yeah. the thing I wanted to say about Medtronics was that I knew, as Brian and I have talked about before, that they like to come up with new and advanced technology. So, as he was mentioning, I thought that they would come up with newer things and we'd have more choices later. So okay. that's another reason I went with them. Very good. And what about the last question um, when it comes to decisions? What about timing the surgery in your personal schedule? How did you weigh, I mean, were you avoiding holidays, travel, or did you just wanna get it done as soon as possible? How did you make that decision? Once I decided to do it, I wanted to get it done as soon as possible. Okay, and you were like, I'm coming in today. I did wait until the week after the holidays, but uh, I think I think that was good for everybody on my team too. Everybody wanted, I think everybody was happy. I decided to wait until the week after the holidays. Yeah, I did it the first week of January, a uh, year and a half ago. Okay. Well, I had some other decisions to make. My daughter was getting married that summer, 
and I had back surgery. Dr. Ponce did both my surgeries. So I had back surgery in May, and then I had DBS at the end of July. But in between those times, my daughter got married, but I had time between that to recuperate and get to her wedding. So the timing was quite interesting. Okay. And are you glad you did it that way? Were you able to participate more? Well, I wish I'd had the DBS before her wedding, but I had to have the back surgery. I had to have it because of some challenges. So that okay. had to come first. Okay. How great that Ponce did both of your surgeries and he could kind of, you know, weigh which order it could be in. Um, what do the two of you remember about preparing for the surgery? You said it was like a year and a half and a year ago. Do you remember the prep process? As far as mentally, you mean? Yeah, and yeah. physically and, or is it like childbirth where those details are all, you know, vague? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know if you're talking about the, the you know that we did have to go through a few, a few tests to make sure we were candidates, mm -hmm. and and uh, so I, I went through those pretty quickly. And as I said, I wanted to get it done, so I went through those as quick as I could. And uh, uh, it was uh, a pretty simple matter of showing up to the hospital when it was time to do it. Okay. So those all the physical things, you know, testing you have to have done, but then we have neuropsych eval, which takes a long time, and so there were several things like that that we had to do to get ready. Okay, and you mentioned the class that you took with some of your family members. That Visitation. was at the hospital? Mm -hmm. That was at the hospital and Meg and some others were there and then other people are, who were uh, going to have DBS. But um, I remember them showing videos and talking about everything they were going to have to do. And, and as much as uh, Lee loves that kind of thing, and my daughter loves that. I'm like, no, 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 la, 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 la. I don't want to know any of that. So for me, that was kind of tough. But I love that they had the educational class to help, uh, to help answer any other questions we had at the time. Okay. I know there's always two camps. Like, someone's going in for knee surgery, half people watch it on YouTube first, and half the people are like you, Patty. Yeah. So <laughs> did you, uh, did you watch, uh, DBS example on YouTube, Brian, what were you? Yeah, I did. I did. That, that didn't bother me, but I, I had no problems doing that. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, look at this. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I think I would be like you, Patty. I don't know. Um, and then what do you remember immediately after the surgery? So, you know, you, upon waking up, what, what are your lingering memories of that? My first thought was, oh my gosh, I don't have tremors. And so that was amazing because I went through that, what we call the honeymoon period. But um, that was, I think, the first thing I remembered. Yeah, and that's kind of a complicated question because it, it takes you to an, uh, kind of a little education piece is that the surgery itself, uh, you know, the, the way the DBS works is the, is the electrical stimulation to your subthalamic nucleus. But they also learned that the trauma itself, the trauma from the surgery itself stimulates the subthalamic nucleus enough to give you uh, a similar uh, result. Because the surgery, I, I one surgery, they installed the, the leads and they installed the, the device, the, 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 you know, the uh, stimulation device at the same time, but they don't turn it on for two weeks. But because of the uh, tissue trauma from the surgery, uh, you get the same result. So I woke up and I, I felt like running. It was just amazing. I felt so good when I woke up from surgery because I didn't have any of my PD symptoms uh, because I was on a honeymoon period, that, which lasts about a day, day and a half in my case. Uh, and uh, so I felt great. And then, and then I kind of slipped back to where I was pre-surgery pre until two weeks later when I had the device turned on and I had turned on the two, two weeks later, and I immediately got relief when they turned on the uh, simulation. My doctor was very good at uh, adjusting it. He adjusted it just right for me, almost within 90% correct the first time we did it. And uh, I felt great immediately. Great. Well, my, my, was dyskinesia, my dyskinesia was gone, and my rigidity was way better. My, my bradykinesia was way better. So I had a similar experience as far as the tremors. My, 
I did have the honeymoon period as I mentioned it, but as soon as Dr. Mahant programmed me, I, it seemed, I was just like, you know, so much better. I want to say 80% better, but since then, you know, it's just been amazing. Very good. And we had a question from um, Sid Donahue. She wants to know, Brian, you said you were active. How long did you have to stop exercising after surgery? Or at all? Not very long. It was, it was maybe four weeks. Yeah. About four weeks. And, and I cheated a little bit. I, I did, I, I, you know, I'm a pretty proficient exerciser. So I knew what things I could do without putting any stress on my, uh, on my chest or, or on my head. So I, I did a few things. I did a lot of walking, a lot of, a lot of kind of fast walking during that period of time, but I was, I was full speed ahead four or five weeks later. Okay. Well, but, and another. As a matter of fact, I went, as a matter of fact I went, I'm just trying to remember. I went skiing five weeks after. I went snow skiing five weeks later. Five weeks later. <laughs> skiing five weeks later. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're not. I, I don't skiing. recommend that. Yeah. I don't recommend that because you get that advice from your doctor. But my doctor let me ski after five weeks. Very good. And <laughs> another question from the audience: Did you have any personality changes or symptoms that were not there before the surgery? Uh, I had a little bit of I had a little bit of fatigue for a while, you know the classic brain surgery fatigue. I think it, just the brain healing create, causes a little fatigue. I had a little bit of that for a few months, um, but it wasn't. I just took it. I took a nap every now and then when I wouldn't have normally before, and um, uh, occasionally I have a little bit of a voice issue, but but nothing, no personality changes uh, other than a little bit of fatigue and, and, and yeah. Okay. Personality-wise, I think I get angry quicker, or I, but um, no, I didn't have any personality changes. I do remember that um, um, I, um, yeah, no personality changes. I'm sorry, I was trying to think of something else. I did experience the fatigue that Brian had as well. Did the same thing, naps every once in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But otherwise, all good there. Okay. And um, Harold was asking, um, just to clarify about exercise. So I think that's between you and your doctor, and hopefully your doctor knows your baseline exercise capacity. But they had you avoid. You said, you know, things that um, any chest exercises and things like that but Brian did say he was on the mountain skiing five weeks after and walking with a helmet, uh, with a helmet. <laughs> with a helmet. <laughs> but you were walking you know um immediately yeah. after maybe, maybe probably within four or five days something like that okay but I mean probably you got up and walked at the hospital I know I remember oh, yeah. walking at the hospital and getting up and walking so. yeah I was okay. I was fully ambulatory walking out of the hospital. Okay, very good. How long were you in the hospital? Do you remember? I was there one night. Me too, overnight. Okay, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. One night. That's amazing. And now, um, how has your medication regimen changed? You're, it sounds like you're not on you know uh, pills every hour anymore, Patty. Mm -hmm. No, I was taking 295s, of, uh, but now I'm taking a, and that was every hour and hour and a half. Now I'm taking them four times a day, and they're 195s, not 295. So it's been remarkable. I'm on about, uh, I, I, for a while I was on about 50% medication. I, 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 can, I can do fine on 50%, but I take about 60% now of the meds I was taking two years ago, about 60% of the carbidopa levodopa. Okay. And you mentioned once Dr. Mahant programmed you, Patty, you could tell an immediate change. What mm -hmm. is the programming routine like? Where do you go? How often does it happen? How long are those appointments? Well, I see Dr. Mahant every, probably about every two months and maybe three sometimes. And she does the programming in her office. And uh, it's very simple. We just, she has a new, um, a new screen, and uh, as I said earlier, Medtronics comes out with new things, so now the 
doctors have these new screening techniques. It's an iPad. But, yeah, it's like a little iPad, maybe even smaller, but yeah. it's, it's um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and she's able to help with the speech and, you know, sometimes my hand will uh, have posturing, but she's helped me with that. So it's, that's kind of interesting because if she tur when she turns it off, then of course my tremors come back like crazy. I mean, I can't hardly even sit in the chair. So then, so immediately, then she, oh, you mm -hmm. see that kind of immediate yeah. effect. It's unbelievable. But um, that you have to, and she'll spend probably an hour with me, answering questions and going through everything we need to talk about. I'm the same. But every, about every four months, I go see my doctor, and we spend you know 30, 45 minutes together, and uh, he tweaks the programming, and we move on. Very easy. Did we lose you? I think we did. She looks frozen. You're frozen from your side. Okay. When it came to DBS. Oh, you're, okay. You're, 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 you're back. back. There you go. She's okay, back. I'm back. Right. I waved my hand. Um, Eileen wanted to know what were your most concerning risks? Well, I was concerned about infection, <laughs> but but I had, uh, I you know, I think the... Uh, what I learned from talking to the surgeon, Dr. Ponce and his and his gal, his nurse Meg, is that even if we did get an infection, he 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 had a lot of success in treating that and 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 and, and managing the infection. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so I I had confidence there wasn't going to be an issue with that. I think my issue was that I was worried because I had the STN, which is for tremors, that that's close to you know, your speech, the speech part of your brain. So I was a little concerned about that because I do a lot of things, speaking engagements mm -hmm. and singing. So that's something I was a little bit concerned about. Okay, very good. And um, Patrick wanted to know if you could estimate what percentage of quality of life did you both get back? Oh my gosh, mine's 100%. <laughs> Well, that was easy. I thought that math might be hard, but that was easy. I don't know how to answer that question. It's it's it, it's 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 um, because I had symptoms even before I was diagnosed. Sometimes I sometimes I believe I, I I find myself thinking I haven't felt this good at doing this particular movement for twelve fifteen years. So there's there's parts of parts of what I'm realizing today about my motor skills is that I did have you know symptoms for years before I was diagnosed, which was 11 years ago. So it's, it's hard for me to answer that question because it's like, like running, sprinting, I can sprint now as well as I did for two or three years before before I was diagnosed. So uh, I, I've worked, I had I've had to work hard to get back there. But I think it's, it's, you know, so some of it's attributed to my, my regimen, but 80% of it is attributed to the device, for sure. Okay. And so yeah. there's, issues, there's things I have trouble doing, but, but, but when, you, when, you, when, you, when you've done the list of things I can do now, I mean, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Okay. What I can do and now that I couldn't do for 11 years, 10 or 11 you years. That you play baseball, so that's kind of your you know, a way for you to evaluate your yeah. symptoms and skills against the, you know, how you that's perform. A great, that's a great observation. That's a good laboratory for me because I can, because I, I can tell you throwing the ball, catching the ball, you know, fielding a grounder, hitting, hitting, hitting a fastball. Those are all things I've, I, some, some days I feel like I haven't done this well in, in many years. So, yeah. Okay, great. And Patty, I know with your, you know, singing and speaking and, riding a bike in platform heels. Has that also, you've been able to measure the results? Definitely. Um, because I had to stop doing a lot of those things. I stopped driving. I stopped doing any kind of, well, I couldn't ride my bike. I, I couldn't do anything like that. So now I'm able to do those things again. I can sit here and talk to you. I can stand and sing a song or, or give a speech or whatever I have to do. So it's been amazing. I can even hug people and we don't fall on the floor. <laughs> so that's a great, 
thing too. Hugs are very important. Yeah. And that question you both said you asked everyone, are you glad you had it done and would you do it again? Could you guys answer that one for us? Oh my gosh, I would do it in a heartbeat because it's been such a life changer for me. Uh, ditto. I mean, it's just, it's been, uh, uh, it's just, it's just, it's a game. It was a game changer for me. Yeah. I, I was one of the fortunate few that got a lot of benefit out of it. And, um, um, I, uh, am a big fan. Me too. I wish I'd I tell done my, I, I wish I'd done sooner <laughs> as well. I tell all my, all, all my buddies, I say, I don't know if you're a candidate, but if you are a candidate, you should think about doing it big time. I've talked to several people, um, as well. And they asked me what I do it again. And would you know, what would you, what would you do? If I were, if I was in their shoes and I said, Oh my gosh, I, I definitely suggest it. And, uh, I give them ideas on, on who to talk to and, and what they can do. But I definitely think it's the best thing that's ever happened to me as far as the Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Very good. Thank you. That was an easy question. That was your softball question. <laughs> um, okay. So another audience question, did you experience any weight gain or weight loss? I have. I've gained a whole lot of weight and I'm not happy about it. So, and because I've had back surgery and my back is hurting, I can't do a lot of exercising. So for me, that's mentally and physically has been very difficult for me. But emotionally, that's really hard because a lot of people go, I don't want to exercise. Well, I want to exercise. I want to get up and do things, but I'm still in a lot of pain. But anyway, that's my experience. I have put on some weight, but actually in my case, it's probably a good thing. I was getting too yeah. thin, I think, because of the dyskinesia and the, uh, the way the, the food reacted with the medication. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't eating a lot during, right before the surgery. So now I'm back to a normal diet and I could probably lose five or 10 pounds, but um, I uh, did gain, I gained the 10 or 15 pounds I should have gained and maybe, maybe 10 more. Okay. And um, another audience member wants to know, they themselves are at the point where they cannot write. Did either of you have that prior to DBS and did the surgery change that? I know, Patty, you said you couldn't use your phone. What about writing? Well, I'm left-handed, and so that wasn't, uh, it was my right hand that was tremoring, but my writing, I use what, the big program, the training your brain, where you think about your writing. So I really have not had trouble with that. Okay. Um, yes, I did have trouble. And that was, a, that was kind of a big issue for me too, because I was a, uh, I was a trained urban designer. And uh, if you know anybody that does that for a living, they have a unique writing style. Uh, and uh, cause it's you use a lot of documents. And, and so it's, it's meant to be pretty decorative. Before my surgery, I had I had horrible handwriting. I had I watched it get worse and worse and worse over over a ten year period, and um, uh, I got to the point where I couldn't write very well at all anymore. But I I I'm back to writing now as well as I did, you know, a year or two after my diagnosis. Okay. Well, one of those motor skills that returned very well. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not completely cured, but it's probably eighty percent cured. Okay. That, that particular mm -hmm. motor skill, yeah. And um, what you, you, you know, you mentioned the big program, Patty, and that you actually like to exercise. And there's been a lot of questions about exercise and, you know, do I have to stop? Can I start? Um, so I think that it, maybe it goes without saying that you can't just get DBS and then sit on the couch and not you know. take your it's, it's, you know, part of your regimen, but you still need to, you said, you know, exercise and work on, um, you know, physical therapy, all right. of that. I have no idea if this has ever been studied before, but I'm, but I'm, I'm convinced that, that the exercise helps you achieve the full potential that the DBS can provide. I have no idea if anybody's ever tested that. I have no idea if there's any, if there's any truth to that. But, but in my personal opinion, even though I think I can stop exercising and feel better than I did just because of the surgery, I think the surgery 
allows me to get the maximum benefit out of my exercise. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah, it does. Because you, you know, keeping, quit, keeping you fit right has now. allowed me to yeah achieve the, the maximum amount of recovery that I that I that I could have possibly imagined to re, to achieve. And okay. and I think a lot of people think that after a program like the big program or anything like that or any kind of exercise you're doing, they think that they can just well, I took the program or I did it for four weeks or whatever, especially, I think everybody should, but especially Parkinson's people, we have to keep moving. It's, it's imperative for us. So even, and especially after, you know, just to, you know, brain fog and feel better. It's just so good for us. Very good. And Patty, this question is for you um, because Brian, you said there weren't other device options when you had it done. So Patty, do you think if there was more education and more resources available about the different possible devices, would that have been helpful in your decision? Like yeah, Boston Scientific and Abbott now are approved for um, um, treating Parkinson's, those DBS devices. Well, I know there are other devices now, but again, I, I went for the one that had the best record, you know, and the doctor who knew what he was doing. So, so Medtronics was just way above everybody else. Okay. There was nothing. And, and they have such a great staff. The team is like family and they make us feel so comfortable. I know I can count on them all the time to ask, answer any questions I might have. So yeah, I, suspect, I suspect that's going to be a harder issue to deal with in the mm -hmm. future, I you know, as, too. as, as the others, you know, have some successful uh, clients and patients um, that that it's going to be a harder decision. But I think you're just going to have to do the same thing we do. You have to rely on your 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 doctor to help you make that decision. Talk to people that have had the device in, implanted and, and and see if see if uh, they were happy. I, that's all. I, that's all I think you can do. And research the other ones as well. Yeah. So I think that's good advice. Yeah. Very good. Um, so Alan wants to know if, if your typing and keyboarding has improved. Was that an yes. issue prior? Yes. Mm -hmm. it has, it has, mine has improved. Okay, great. Um, let's see. So Eileen wanted to know how many times DVS can be done. And Eileen, I'm just going to say since none of us here are physicians, um, I don't feel that the three of us are qualified to answer that. So. We'll, we'll punt that to, uh, to the future. And Sydney said what you mentioned, Brian, is spot on, that maximizing the benefits of exercise is a big part of the reason she's considering DBS. So it sounds like you're resonating with- Sydney okay. Donahue? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, tell her I said hi. Okay. Hi. In um, Las Vegas, I believe I've yes, met right. in Vegas, yeah. and your husband. They're awesome. We, we've um, met before, yeah. And okay, so Patty, do you still wear high heels? Well, not with my back trouble, but I will as soon as my back's not bothering me. Okay. Definitely. Uh, these are the burning questions. They what are. About, yeah. What about um, if we're in the cosmetic vein? What about you know shaving your head? Um, did you guys well, have to? With this procedure, we didn't have to. And uh, Dr. Ponce said, uh, we have good barbers. So they, they just, you know, trim a little right here. And then, you know, and you can't hardly tell it. So. I mean, I think, they, I think they cut maybe the size of a silver dollar mm -hmm. out of the two locations where they did the lead implants. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And Fortunately for me, I have a good head of hair, and so I, I, mm -hmm. they, it didn't even show right. in me. Me either. Nice. I don't know. I might highlight that and get, you know, yeah. point it out to people, like, look at my badge of honor. But, <laughs> but that's great that it's only a, a silver dollar. And, oh, and then Patrick is saying that he's bald, so different <laughs> story for him. Well, um, let's see. So another comment is that Parkinson's has affected my driving, biking, and hiking. So 
I don't know, we, we're here in Arizona, so I assume maybe some of you are, are hikers. Um, ha have those three things? I mean, oh, and you were riding the bike in spike heels, so mm -hmm. for you, have those things resonated? Yes, and, and, and at one time, because the trimmers were so bad, I was not driving anymore. And so now I'm back to driving, you know, life is great again. Okay. Yeah, I'm a lot more confident driving than I was before the surgery, uh, a lot more confident. Um, my hiking ability is, is essentially restored to pre-diagnosis levels. Um, and biking is, 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 is uh, uh, I was actually pretty good at that even before the surgery. Uh, so, uh, but yes, all those skills I'm very capable at today, for sure. Great, great. And we're coming up on one o'clock. So everyone out there, this is your last chance to, um, to type in your questions. But I have learned a lot from the two of you. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and being so, you know, open and honest about all the nitty gritty details. Um, well, thank you for having us. I just want to say that because, it, you know, knowledge is power and the more people can learn about something, you know, the better they'll feel about making a decision. So thank you and for doing this and Medtronics for allowing us to be here today. So it's very good to uh, learn about all these different things that are happening. Yes. Absolutely. And someone did ask for um, good websites to research. Mm -hmm. I say each of the individual device companies, I know um, Medtronic and Boston and, and Abbott, you'd be able to research through those websites. Um, the Parkinson Foundation, we always refer people, they have great printed materials and online materials. And also talking to your, um, your neurologist and someone added dbsandme.com as a good online research site. And just as the, the general, Fox Foundation. Jay Fox Foundation. Jay Fox Foundation. Fox Foundation. Jay Fox Foundation. they have stuff on DBS yeah. specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And um, both of you mentioned you went to as many, you know, you went to a lot of conferences, not just for the material, but it sounds like also for networking and, and meeting people. Um, right. So, as an organization that puts on conferences, I would give a plug for attending those. Um, last month, we interviewed um, Dr. Ponce and Meg, part of the team that did your procedures. And right. we have that recorded video on our website and YouTube channel, so everyone can check out that. And um, yeah, and absolutely. So the thanks are, are uh, streaming in. Everyone's appreciative and you know thankful for you sharing your time and your information. So I'll pass that along. And yes, this will be recorded and it'll be up on our YouTube channel as well um, in a couple days. So yeah. So any closing comments to put a pretty bow on it? I put you on the spot. We covered it all. I think we really talked about a lot today. Well, I would say for people to say yes to DBS because it's really changed my life. And I echo that. Um, um, and then I would just also say uh, uh, the, the next best thing is uh, giving back to giving back uh, to the to the community is a uh, fuel. And both of you, thank. I mean, you know, thank you both for all you do, for all your advocacy and your public speaking. And you two are living examples of that and what it can do. So, I will wrap this uh, this program up. So again, thank you to everyone on behalf of the entire PMD Alliance team, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Right, thanks. Bye, everyone.